Hello everyone and welcome to our Saturday live workshop. We're going to continue with the project that we started a few weeks ago and that is to uh, create a blogging, uh, vlogging type uh, website from scratch. So today we will be taking a look at how to create a custom post uh, template for our website. So I'll be showing you step by step how to do that. Now, before we begin, uh, I'd like to do some um, uh, some sound checks first. If you can hear me loud and clear, please let me know in the comments box before we continue. So hopefully everything is working fine. Right, I can see here loud and clear, loud and clear. Fantastic. Hope everyone had a great uh, Easter break if you celebrate Easter. So what we're going to do now is to uh, take a look at the site we've designed so far. And uh, the rules are throughout this uh, live workshop, you can ask me any questions and I'll be sure to uh, take a look at the comments and uh, respond to them. So before we begin, I'd like to say uh, welcome to uh, Monique, Ellie, uh, Donnell, Steve, good to see you, Peter, Russell. Uh, who else do we have here? We also have Brenda, awesome. Uh, Alex, now Alex, I can't read, I think, not sure what that language is, but I'm sure it's something nice. But anyway, good to see you. Right, let's have a look here. Who else do we have? Agante, good to see you too. Uh, Roger, we also have Ken. Right, let's have a look here. <laughs> Ed say, uh, says loud and crackling. Okay, crackling. Okay, let me just lower my um, my sound here. Hopefully that is uh, better. Uh, Wayne says uh, audio is breaking up. Is it still breaking up? I've just lowered my um, my output. Is it still cracking up? Okay, please let me know if the sound is better. Okay, so still crackling. Okay, let me try and lower this a bit more. Maybe that will be much better. I just wanna make sure we start off on a good note. Okay, so looks like um, everything is okay. Right, so let's go through what we designed so far. So I'm just going to switch over here to my desktop. Okay, Ron says, uh, I set my volume at 3 out of 100 because it's way so loud. Okay, I've just uh, reduced my volume here, so hopefully uh, it won't come in too loud. Um, if we still continue to have a problem, I'll just change my mic and then I can just use a different mic moving forward. But so far, it looks like everything is okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to my desktop so we can see what we've designed so far. All right, so this is uh, the website. Okay, so this is the landing page. I'm just gonna scroll, in fact, let me hide this. I'm just gonna scroll down here so you can see the page. So we have a video there, we have some images. And we also have a um, opt-in form, and we also designed this footer. Now, if you wanna see how we designed all these pages, you can always go back to the previously streamed uh, videos. Okay, and over here, this is our menu item. So the last thing that we did was create a, shop, a shopping page. So if we come over here on uh, Start Shopping, you can see here we have our products. And when we click on the product here, it shows us the product. Now, we also went through these products and discussed that. You also have to play around with the template if you want the, um, the product to show on a full page, just like this. Okay, and then on the bottom here, it also shows related posts. Now, if we come back over here to the menu, we also uh, created the uh, contact page. So you can see here, we have just the basic form and an image here on the left. And this also has a footer. Okay, now let's take a look. Uh, we also have the adventures page where we have some images and we also created this uh, hero area here. So basically this uh, template or this website is almost done. And like I mentioned, uh, this website uh, will be um, 
uh, accessible for free. So I'll be giving away this design absolutely free. So you can go ahead and download it if you don't want to go and follow this step by step. OK, so what we're going to concentrate today on is the actual blog. So I'm just going to come over here to the blog. And as you can see here, we don't have much going on. Now, the most important thing I want to talk about here is the blank, uh, I mean, the default blog post that comes out of uh, Divi. So if we take a look here, this is how it comes out. And I'm sure you can agree with me that this is way too basic. Uh, to be honest, it's uh, pretty boring. And uh, we would like to spice this up a little bit, make it look much better and uh, see how you know, far we can push the design. So this is what we'll be doing today. Now, for those of you that hasn't bought Divi yet, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, uh, I will give you access to my Divi Blueprint 3 course, which right now is in development. It needs to be updated to the latest version. But I've also done other uh, mine, uh, small courses that can also show you the latest features that Divi has in store. All right, so what we're going to do now is to create a brand new post template for our website. All right, so we're going to come over here. In fact, before we begin, any questions so far? Um, OK, so I'm just checking here to see. All right, so no questions so far, that's great. So let's continue. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back over here to the dashboard and uh, create a new post. So I'm gonna come over here to post and then I'm gonna click on add new. So the most important thing here is to distinguish your post from your template. So we're gonna call this main post template, okay? All right, so that's the uh, the title of our post. Now, the next stage here is very, very, very important. So what you want to do is to come over here and make sure you remove the right sidebar, okay? Now, the reason why we're doing this is because, as I showed you uh, um, for a few moments ago, the sidebar comes in by default when you create uh, your post. So what we want us to do in our template is to make sure we don't have the sidebar, okay? Uh, the next thing we also want to do here is to remove the post title because we're going to add it in manually. Okay, so we're going to come over here and click on hide. So now we've hidden the post title and we also remove the sidebar. The next thing you want to do is to add your featured image. So we're going to come over here. Now I have images that I've, I have in my media library already, but in your case, you can upload images uh, from your, I mean, from your computer to your media library. OK, so with that, I'm going to go ahead now and click on Select. Right. Now, let's have a look what we need to do next here. So everything here seems fine. Everything is OK. So the next stage now is to uh, publish your page. So we're going to come over here, hit Publish. And now we can go in and click on Use Divi Builder. So now we're going to go into the Builder and start building our post template. Right. So here. You, we can uh, choose a pre-made layout if we need to, but I'm going to start building this from scratch. So let's start building. Right. So the most important thing here when uh, someone goes on our page, our post, uh, post is to see a nice image on the page. So that's what we're going to start building first. And then we also need to have a nice title for our hero area for our post. So let's go, let's go ahead and add that. So I'm going to click here on this plus button here. I mean, for a single column. And in that column, we are going to um, add a post title. OK, here we go, post title. So the first time you click on post title, it brings in all these elements, right? So what we want to do is to come to elements, show meta. I think we'll leave uh, the meta tags there, show author, that's fine. The main thing we need to uh, disable here is the featured image. So I'm going to click here to disable the featured image. Right, so what I'm gonna do here, because all this is covered, I'm going to just move this to the side so you can see me design this part here. Okay, 
So now we have the main post title and we also have this uh, text here. So what we may want to do now is to add a background image to our section. So I'm going to save this. Okay. And then we're going to come to our section settings here and add a background image. So I'm going to come over here, click on the third tab and then add an image. Oh, in fact, you know what? I saw an option of, uh, for dynamic image. I don't know if you can see this. But if I mouse over this area here, you can see this dynamic um, icon. So if we click that, we can add a featured image here. Now, this is very important because uh, every time we use this template, we don't have to add this image manually onto our header section because it's going to pull it dynamically from the post image. Okay, so the image that we're going to use for the post while we're creating our post is what is pulled by the template. So this is very, very important. And I hope, you know, you saw how I did that. Okay, so now that we have our image here, it's looking beautiful. It's a bit too bright. So it's going to be very difficult for us to read uh, our, our post title. So what we may want to do here is to just uh, add a gradient, just to make sure that things look much easier here to read. Okay. Um, so to do that, in fact, we can add, either add a gradient or we can just add a solid color. So let's add a solid color here. Click this plus button. We're going to add our color here. And then we're going to come back over here to the image. And then we're going to scroll down until we find background image blend. Change it from normal to overlay. Now, you may notice that the whole image now has gone really, really dark. Now, not to worry, because if we come back here on the color tab and click in here, we can actually drag this slider down to allow us to see more of the image. So I think I'm gonna to stick to about um, 0.8 there. So that looks great because we can still see what's behind. We can still see the image, okay? That's the most important part. All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead now and save. So this is our main uh, hero area, our main header area. So the next stage now is to make sure that our text is now easier to read. So let's go in and play around with the colors. So I'm gonna click here on my settings, and then I'm gonna come to design. Right, so let's start by, okay, so this is the text title. So what we're gonna do here is to make it all caps, and then let's change the color. Okay, so that's the color that we have from our color palette. And as you can see here, the colors are really working well together because they're all from the, from the uh, color palette. Okay, so if you want to use maybe uh, this slightly grayish color, you can go with that. But I think this, this color here works great for what we're trying to do here. Okay, so the next thing here is to center it because I think this will look better if our text is centered. And um, I'm going to make sure here that this is set to semi-bold. Uh, do I need to add some letter spacing? Let's see what it looks like. So this is where you get to experiment, see how things look like when you um, add letter spacing and so on. So let's see what this looks like. So I think that looks cool if I add letter spacing. And I'm going to go here with, let's go with eight. So I think eight is a very good, um, very good um letter spacing option here. Great. So the next stage is to come over here and uh, work on our meta text. Right. So over here on the meta text, the next thing, again, we're just going to make sure it's all centered. This is very important. And then we're going to add our color. Now, the text here is a bit too, it's a bit too much. So let's go in and fix that. So first of all, it's set to regular by default. Let's set it to light. Okay. And then for the size, let's reduce this a little bit. So let's go with 15. I think 15 is great. Right, so I'm pretty much happy with um, my title there for my uh, header area. So I'm gonna come back over here to content, click on elements. Now over here, let's say you want to disable the author name. You can always click here, uh, click like that. I mean, um, disable show author and that takes, uh, removes the author. Now, the reason why I removed the author is uh, pretty much if you're just the only person uh, that is adding your blogs onto the website, you may not need to add, I mean, to have your name there because you're the only one. But if it's a busy website where you have different authors, this is the, um, 
the re uh, this is the uh, main reason why you may want to add the author there because maybe you may have three, four, or five different authors. Okay, so for in this case, I'm going to remove that. The category, I think it's okay. We're going to leave the category as it is and the date as it is because maybe people want to see uh, when this was released. Right, so moving on. I hope you're all on the same page so far. Okay, so moving on. Let's save this for now. So now we need to decide what sort of content do we need to have. So let's say you have a blog, a blog which uh, has videos and a blog which has maybe just text. This is where you can decide how your template is going to be. So in our case here, I'm going to make this a video template. Uh, we've got a question here from, uh, I think it's Tiami. I think Tiami. Uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing it well. Uh, the question is, you have to manually hide the sidebar every time, and the answer is yes. Now, this is the part where um, we are really waiting for uh, a major update when, when uh, Divi releases the theme, the theme builder, because doing it this way, every time you do it, you have to do it manually, you see. But with, as a theme builder, this template can just be applied to all your blog posts, and you don't have to go in and manually do it. But at the moment, yes, we have to go in and manually do it, OK? Right, any more questions before we uh, continue? Okay, so no questions so far. All right, let's continue then. Right, so uh, this template here, let's make it a uh, video template. But before we do that, let's add our social media icons here. Okay, I almost forgot that. So social media icons are very important because when people come to your website and they love the post or the love, um, you know, the post that you've just created, they can also share it on social media. So it's always good to add your social media follow here. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for follow. There we go, social media follow. And then we can add our icons here. So we have Facebook and Twitter in by default. So let's add a few more here. So I'm going to go with, um, let's go with Pinterest. I'm just adding random ones here. And then you want to click this black, uh, back item, click another, uh, click another one, and let's add this time YouTube. Now, what you want to do here is also to add your links. So you want to go in and add your link URL here to your pages or your um, profile pages. So let's add one more. We have YouTube. I think Instagram is also very popular here. Where is Instagram? Oh, here we go. Instagram. Right. So now that we have these, uh, the next stage is to come over here to design. Uh, ideally, I want to um, center this. So let's see how we can do that. Um, okay, there we go. Design, alignment, and then click on the center. So now they're all centered. We can even go further and customize these icons and make them look really branded and make them look like, uh, I mean, and make them have the colors of our branding. So to do that, let me show you. So we want to come back over here, click on this gear icon. Okay, so um, we can uh, click here on design. In fact, before we click on design, we can always come over here to the to the background and uh, delete the background. So we can just have just the icon in there. So as you can see here, we just removed the background. All we have now is the icon. And if you want to go in and change the icon color, we can always go in and change the icon color. But what we're going to do is we're just going to keep things simple here. I'm just going to go in and just remove the background, okay? Because I think this looks much, much better without the uh, the backgrounds. Okay, so we've got a few more to do. We have YouTube, remove the background, and then finally we have Instagram, remove the background. Okay, so I think that looks really nice. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and save. Now let's add the next item, which is the uh, the video. So we're going to come over here, click this plus button. Click on regular, single column, and in here, we're going to add a video. 
like that. Now, this is where you can go in here and add your own URL, okay? So every time you, you go onto this post, you add your own URL from YouTube or whatever video platform that you're using, and that will be added onto this one here. But in this case, we're not gonna add our own uh, video. I just wanna show you how to set it all up as a template. So by default, when this comes in, it just covers the whole um, area here. And to be honest, that doesn't look really nice. Ideally, you want to make the video much smaller, make it fit you know, your design well. So let's do that. So we're going to come over here to design sizing. So these are the new uh, updates to our sizing tab. So I'm not sure which one it is. Okay, in fact, it's this one here, the width. So if we reduce the width here to about, let's say, 70%, and then center it. I think that looks much better in terms of the size. Now let's go back to the content. And this is where we can add a video overlay. Okay, so we can add our image here. And oh, let me close this. And by the way, again, if we want to add an overlay, again, we can pull this dynamically from our post image. <laughs> okay. So let's do that because we don't want to have a template where every time you have to go in and do a lot of things manually. So again, if we cl click on this dynamic tab, a dynamic icon here, we can just select our featured image just like that. Great. So now every post that you, you create where you add your own um, post uh, image, it will be pulled in dynamically into your video. Okay, so great. We have two elements now where we have a dynamic image, which is this area here, our hero area, and also the video. So what we may also want to do here is to just add, you know, a bit of a little bit of a design here, some rounded corners. So uh, we can come over here to border. So let's add, let's say, 10 for our rounded corners. Um, in fact, that, does, that doesn't look nice. So let's undo that. Okay, right. So the next stage now is to um, drag this up into our hero area. Okay, so let's go back to uh, spacing. Right, so what we're going to do here is to add some negative margins. So we're going to drag this up like that. So now you can see our video is slightly into our hero area. Okay, so let's save this. I'm not sure why this has been stretched like that. I'm gonna go in and take a look at why it is like that. Okay, so moving on, let's add some more content here. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and we are going to add some more texts. So uh, I'm gonna come over here and search for my text module. Okay, again, our width is a bit too wide for our text so what we may want to do is to go in quickly and fix that so i'm going to come over here to design and then i'm going to click on sizing set this to 70 percent and this is the same size as the video we're going to center it so now the text is now centered with our video which is great so next i'm going to come over here and just add some dummy text from lorem 2 because if you know me by now, I don't like uh, typing. So this is how I get to just add my text quickly. Okay, so we're going to come back over here into our content, text, and then I'm just going to paste my dummy text in here. Okay, so we just want to pretend that this is going to be our article. So this text here looks a bit too big. So we're going to come over here to design text. Let's play around with the size in here. So I think if we bring this down to about 17, maybe even 16, that's a very good size. And uh, it's much easier to read because the previous size is a bit too much. Okay, great. So now that we have this in place, we may want to have maybe a title that goes with this. So let's save this. Click this plus button, add another text module. Like that. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to dynamically pull the text from uh, using dynamic content. So we're going to click here on the dynamic content. And what we need here is the post title. Okay, so we're going to click here on post title. And as you can see, it's pulled my text here and it's called main post template. Let's go and stylize that now. So I'm going to come over here, click on text. So we're going to make it all caps. 
add a bit of letter spacing. I know this may be um, a repeat of what we have at the top where we have the main title, but it's always nice to have the title in there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna come back over here to my content because as you can see, it's not centered correctly. So we're gonna click here on um, design. So I'm looking here for sizing. Okay, so we're gonna set this to 70%. That's strange. Am I doing it on the wrong item? <laughs> now, this is the thing when you use, um, oh, this is strange. What am I doing wrong here? Okay, let's go back and try it one more time. Design, sizing. Hmm, that's not working. That's strange. Anyway, so what I want to do now is to click on transform, translate, and then I'm just going to move this until it's in the right position. Okay, drag it up there like that. Right, so I'm pretty much happy with the way it is. So let me just check here on my tablet and just make sure that it's on the right place and it's not. So on the tablet, we're going to bring this back over here. And then on the phone, the phone, it seems okay. Okay, so that look, that's looking great. Right, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and save. And then all I have to do now is just to drag this to the top. Like that. And it's still not in place. So let me go back in and fix that. Okay, it looks fine there. So not sure what's happening there. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Uh, hopefully that should look much better when I preview the page. So this, these are the elements that we have so far. So let's say you want to add more items in there. You can also add images uh, to go along with the post. But you know what? We're going to keep things very simple here. We're going to just save this and uh, save this as a template. So we're going to come over here now and uh, click on this plus button. No, in fact, I'm going to click here on this button here. I can't describe it, but it looks like uh, an arrow within a circle. But anyway, this is the save to library. So if you click here, this is how you get to save this design that we've just done into the library. So let's call this our main, main template. Oops. Try this one more time. Main post template. Okay. Uh, create new category so we can say posts. Save to library. Okay. So now that we have this, it's saved to the library. We don't have to save this particular page anymore. So we can just close this because our design now is in the library. Okay. So let's close this now. Go back here. Relieve this. Go to our dashboard. Now let's create a brand new post. Okay, we're going to create a brand new post. So we're going to come over here to posts. Now, this is the part where you really have to pay attention because it's very important that you get this right. Otherwise, it won't work correctly. So on here, we're going to say all posts add new. So I'm just going to call this, in fact, let's use lorem text here. Okay, so this is going to be our title. Right, so what's important here is to make sure come to the uh, to the page layout select no sidebar and because we have our title in our design you also want to make sure post title here is set to hide and then you want to set your featured image so my image here is going to be let's go with this one here select great so now i have those three elements in place all i have to do now is to click on publish Okay, and then I'm going to click on Use Divi Builder. Right. So the next stage now is to choose the uh, template that we designed. And to find that template, you want to come over here to choose Pre-Made Layout. So I'm going to click here. 
Now, these are the ones that come by default with Divi. Of course, you don't want to uh, choose those. You want to come to your saved layouts, okay? So the one that we've just saved is called main post template. So we're gonna select that. So now it's importing all our design elements. And in a moment, it's gonna pull our brand new image from our image that we uh, saved, which is cool because that's gonna save us from doing a lot of work uh, when it comes to setting up you know, all the uh, elements on that page. Uh, it's taking a bit long here, not sure why. So while this is happening, if you have any questions, please ask your questions in the comments box and I'll do my best to respond to that. Facts Cooperation says, I have a question. Please go ahead with your question. Wow, this is taking so long. This is strange. Okay, I'm gonna refresh this page. Oh, there we go. Right, so as you can see, the elements are now pulled in, okay? This is our hero area, our title, I haven't touched that. Um, the dates, again, it's there as it is. And then here on the video, the video thumbnail is in place. Uh, I'm not very happy with the title here, okay? So I'm just gonna delete that. And that's also another example where, where once you created your template, you can always go in and delete that, okay? If you don't need, if, you, if something doesn't look right. So as you can see here, my template has worked and it's pulled in all the content that I need. The only thing that I have to do now since these, these areas here are pulled in dynamically, is to just change this text. So you can just go in and just start typing and that information can be changed, uh, you know, very, very easy. Okay, so once you've changed all that information, um, in fact, let me just go in and just show you that quickly. So let's say this is my new content. I can just come over here to my text module and then I can just highlight all this paste my new content and save. And we can also go in here and uh, customize some of this text if we need to. So let's say we want to add some uh, URLs, some links, whatever it is, you can always go into, uh, into this area here and you know uh, adjust it the way you want to, okay? So let's say I highlight this text and I wanna make it bold, I can just go in and make it bold just like that. Okay, and then that's your post done and dusted. So I'm gonna save this. and you can exit the Visual Builder. Now, um, any questions so far? Because there's something that I need to address here. Uh, Brenda here says, uh, you can also create an author bio uh, at the end and make it global so it's on every post too. Yes, absolutely, you can do that. And um, that is also pulled in dynamically, so you don't have to update it every single time. So if you decide to add it on this uh, template, every time you use that template, that author bio is going to be in that article. But as I mentioned, uh, the author bio, yes, it's good, but I, I prefer using it when, let's say, you have... Uh, more than one um, uh, person that's contributing to your blog. But if it's only one person, that information can be found on the about page. So I think, you know, when people come to your, your blog every, I mean, every time you release a post, just them seeing that over and over again can be, you know, a bit daunting. So that's why I don't add it there. Now, there's also something that I haven't added here, which I think would be very, very good. And that is an opt-in form. And again, that opt-in form can be added here uh, in the template and that template, every time you use it, that opt-in form will be there. So that's something that also could be added. Now, there's something here that I also need to mention that I find a bit um, frustrating at the moment. Before we were able to design this blog template uh, with a full width option where our design, like for example, our, he our header area here could go all the way to the edges but it looks like in this latest update, we are unable to do that. Uh, just hold on one second here. 
while I make this full screen. Yeah, it looks like on this latest update, this TV update, we can't have things go full width on the blog post. And that's, you know, it's a bit limiting because I like having my designs to go full width, you know, edge to edge. Like for example, this hero image, it will be nice if that hero image could just go across the page and that would look really, really nice. And also, um, before, we also we were also able to have this go into the uh, the header area, which means it just covered the header area. Now, with this design, as you can see, it's leaving some white space on the top, some white space on the sides. And I think the only way out of this is to uh, play around with this page using CSS. And I don't really like doing that, to be honest, because uh, with with that, you have to make it work on every single, you know, uh, view and I'm not very very good at CSS so this is something that I hope is going to be updated very 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 soon uh, in the future DV updates where we have full control of how we design our blog uh, our blog post it would be nice to really have that image just go across you know the top he header area and across the whole you know the screen so that's something that is lacking right now with this current state of the DV theme. So as I mentioned, hopefully this will be added very soon. So this is how you create your template. Any questions so far? Oh. I have some tips here. Right. Um, Donnell says uh, width set to 100% max and width set to 100 will work. Okay, good. I also have something here from Agante. Go over 100%. Okay, great. Uh, so it looks like this could work. Great. Let's try this out. So I'm going to switch over here to my screen and let's try out uh, what Agante and uh, Donnell is suggesting here. Okay, so let's go in. So as you can see here, I hope you can see my screen. I'm going to go into the section settings, design, no, layout, I mean, sorry, uh, sizing. Right, so the width here is set to auto, so I need to set it to 100%. Max width, let's set that to 100% as well. Right, so as you can see, I've set my width here to 100%, max width 100%. If I save that, it's not working. I thought so. <laughs> I thought so because I tried it a few times and it didn't work. So this is only on the post template okay if you're designing uh, pages with this pages is fine you can design pages full with all that stuff it works okay it's just the posts and also the woocommerce page also doesn't allow that option um i also saw the video from uh, josh uh, basically, he was um, going over how you make full width. Now, this the reason why it's not working here is, is because it's a post template. Uh, what Josh went through was correct. Uh, every time you want to make full width, um, in fact, let me do a demo and show you what I mean by this, okay? So I'm going to save this and create a new page. because I don't want this to be confusing um, for those of you who are not sure what we're talking about. So let's just call this um, with demo. Okay, use the V Builder. Right, so we're gonna build from scratch. Right, so let's say we add, let's say we add something here, let's say a blurb, okay? We're going to add a color in the background here so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's say you want this to be full width, okay? Because by default, as you can see here, it's not full width. If you want this full width, 
this is where you come into your row settings, design, sizing. As you can see here, the foot is uh, the width is set to 80%. If I do that, it's going to be set to 100%. And then on the max width, and this is the maximum width of that row, this is where you need to come in and add 100%. And now you can see that it's gone 100%. Now, this is the difference. It works if you are working on a page, but on a post, it doesn't work. So this same thing that I've just done on a post does not work. So let me try and replicate this again on a post. So let's, let's save an exit here. Okay, so this is a new post. Okay, let's call this post test, use Divi Builder. So we're gonna do the same thing. I forgot to remove the side, the, uh, the side templates. Let me go back in and do that. So I'm gonna remove the sidebar. So I'm come over here, remove the sidebar. Okay, so now let's edit with the DV Builder. Build from scratch. So we're gonna do the same thing, add a blurb, save that. We're gonna come in here, add a color in the background, just, just as we did before, save that, okay? So now if we're trying to make this full width, here's the thing, if we go into design, sizing, as we did before, 100%, and then 100% on the max width. Save that, doesn't work. Okay, so I hope that's uh, clear. And if you say, okay, but Mac, you're doing this on the, um, on the uh, row, why don't you do it on the uh, section, okay? I'll come over here to the section, click on design, sizing, and then again here it's set to auto, I'm gonna do 100%, max width 100%, and if I save this, boom, doesn't work, okay? So that's the main difference. So I'm not saying what Josh showed, uh, Josh Hall showed, uh, is not correct. No, um, the, all I'm saying is what he suggested is correct uh, on the pages, but on the posts, it doesn't go full width. I hope this is clear. Okay, Alex says in the settings of the post, you should uh, start or you should stand for with. Okay, let's try that because maybe that's something that I've missed. Let's save this. That could be the answer. So you could be right there. So what we need to do here on the page layout, let's go to full width, update. So this could be the answer actually. Ah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Right, okay. Sorry about that, guys. So what we need to do, instead of just removing the sidebar, we need to make it full width. Okay, great. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much. And I think Agante also suggested that. Awesome, okay, so we can do full width. Uh, did you have to set it in? Uh... Yes, you have to set it in, in, in WordPress first. Before, uh, before you go on the template. Okay, so what we're gonna, what we're gonna do now is to go back to our templates. <laughs> Monique says teamwork makes, uh, makes the post uh, work. Awesome, yes, absolutely. Okay, so that's what I was missing. Great, so now let's go back to our post template and uh, work on it again. So uh, we're gonna come back over here And uh, let's go to our library. No, we're not saving to library. It's, um... Okay, so we're gonna add our template. 
And this is the one main post template. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to override what we have. I don't know why it takes a bit of time. But if I recall, last time I just refreshed this and it worked. There we go. That is looking much better now. Okay, so what we can do now is let's redesign this and just make it look much better, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on Edit Post. Okay, so over here, you can see it's set to full width. So this is the most important part. So post test, let's give this a name, post te uh, test two. Okay, we're going to update that. Right, so it's set to full width. That's great. So what we can do now is to set our featured image. So we're going to go with uh, this image here. Click on update. And then we're going to edit with the Divi Builder. Right, so now we can see our image there is in the background, but on the top here, we have this by default. I don't know why that is there by default. So let's go ahead and fix that. In fact, you know what's easier is just for us to find the post that we created and then make changes to that one. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna click on add new. Mac post two. So instead of having this right sidebar here, I'm going to say, that's strange. The full width option is gone. That is strange. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, let's refresh this. <laughs> right, look, page layout, there's nothing there. <laughs> okay, um, first use the builder and then, okay. Okay, use Divi Builder. Okay, we just save this and then we're going to go back. Right, okay. Now, I really need to go over this because this is going to be quite confusing for a lot of people. So as you can see here, and thanks for the suggestions there, um, uh, I think it was uh, Ron and Donnell. Thank you very much for your suggestions there. Now, when, when you're building your posts or you want to make your post full width, as you can see, when you first create a brand new post, on the bottom there, you don't have the option for, I mean, for full width. That option only comes up after you've uh, chosen to build a page using, uh, using Divi and then coming back to choose that option. And that is why when I first created the post template, that option for full width was not there. So that is why I was uh, expressing my frustration because there was no option of full, for full width. So I think this is a, either a bug or something is not right there because before I've actually made a tutorial about this and it worked fine. So this time um, we have to create the page first, uh, use the Divi Builder and then come back to it for this option to show. So as you can see here, now it's there, full width is now there.
Okay, so that's a note that you uh, need to take before you start creating these uh, these pages. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to build this one more time quickly so you can see the whole process. Okay, because I don't want to leave a lot of you confused about how you create your 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 posts this way. Okay. Ron, uh, that you're absolutely uh, correct. With the uh, theme builder, we won't have to go through this because there's a lot of steps that we have to do to build this. Whereas with the theme builder, all you have to do is to build a page once and then apply that page to all your posts or all your pages just like that with a single click. So that way it's much easier. But let's go through this one more time so we can see you know, how, how we can create this. So for those of you that want to create templates now, before the Divi Builder comes up, uh, this is what we need to do. So I'm just gonna call this Mac post, uh, let's call this Mac post template. Okay, so now that we have the, uh, now that we have the option for full width, let's go ahead and select that. Uh, on the bottom here, we want to hide the title and then we can set our featured image here. So again, I'm just gonna go with this image right here, click on select. So now that we have all these elements, I'm gonna click on update. And then I'm gonna come over here to edit the Divi Builder. All right, so I'm gonna build this from scratch. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go you know, quite fast through this so that um, we can just, uh, so I can show you how this works. So I'm gonna go for a single column and in that column, we're gonna have a post title Okay, we're gonna to come to elements and then on the elements here, we are going to disable the author and also here on the featured image, we're gonna get rid of that. So this is all we have so far, that's great. We're gonna come over here to design text. We're gonna center everything. And I'm gonna mouse over this area here where we have the title, just click on, uh, in fact, let's add our background image first. Okay, so we're gonna come over here to our section background and add an image. So I'm gonna click here on this third tab. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna add this dynamically. So I'm gonna click here on use dynamic content and the dynamic content is going to be our featured image. Right, so now our featured image is in there. It's covering also our hero area, which is fantastic. Now this is what I was really, really looking forward to. Okay, great. So let's make this a bit dark now. So we're gonna come over here to our first tab click our color like that. And then we're gonna come back on the image tab and uh, let's change the overlay. So we're gonna change here from the background um, mo mode to multiply. And then we're gonna come back over here to our first color and then just drag the slider down until we are happy with how much we're showing off that image. So I think that's fine. Uh, maybe slightly lower. Okay, great, I'm happy with that, I'm gonna save. Now I'm gonna go in and work on the titles. So here I'm gonna click on my settings and then I'm gonna start with the title here. Give it a color as we did before. Change my font weight from regular to, you can even go for bold if you want, but I think semi bold is better, okay? Give this a bit of letter spacing. I think last time we set it to about uh, eight. Okay, that looks, that looks great. And then we're also gonna set our text color here like that, change the size to about 14. Okay, so that's looking fine. I'm gonna save that. Now let's add our social media icons. I'm gonna click this plus button, social follow. I'm gonna select that. Now I'm gonna add my social media icons. So Pinterest, click back. Click on this plus button. Let's add um, YouTube. Go back. Now let's add Instagram. Right, so we have all these now, that's looking great. Now let's go in and remove the backgrounds. Okay, I'm gonna remove the background from the Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube. Instagram, great, so all that is removed now. Click on design alignment, and then we're gonna center this. And now, as I mentioned before, you wanna go in and add all your links 
to your social media icons so you can go to your profile pages. Okay, so now with that set, I'm gonna go ahead now and save that. Okay, so the next stage is to add our video. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button. In fact, I need to add a new section. So in here, we're gonna add a video like that. We're gonna add an overlay image. And again, as I mentioned, the overlay image here is going to be a featured image. So it's gonna pull this dynamically from the featured image that we used on the uh, actual page. All right, so that's great. I've got that in place now. The next stage is to resize this. I'm gonna come over here to design, sizing. I'm gonna reduce the width here to about, let's go with 80% this time. We're gonna center it. Okay, so that's looking fine. Save that. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna drag this into the negative space, just like that. So I'm gonna go with minus 155. That's looking great. I'm gonna click this plus button, add some text. Take that. And then I'm gonna to come to lower room two and add some text. Okay, right, so I'm gonna paste this, click on design, and uh, what I'm gonna do here is to, again, work on the sizing. So I'm gonna click here on sizing, make this 80%, and center it. Great, so now we have our video, we have our content, so that's looking great. Now, as I mentioned before, you can also add some more elements here that you can pull dynamically. So let's click this plus button and um, let's add text. So if you wanna add more dynamic items, if you click on that dynamic uh, item, you can also add the author bio as we um, mentioned, I think it was a gunter that men uh, mentioned this. So you can add post author, author bio. So I don't have the bio there, so that's why it's not showing. But if you have the bio, you can just add your bio that way. And that can be added into uh, WordPress itself. Side title, tagline, current date. So these are the things that you can pull in dynamically if you want to add those, but I'm not gonna add that at the moment. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete that. So let's say this is our final uh, page. Now this looks way much better and I'm sure you can all agree with me that this looks way, way much better. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as a template. So I'm gonna come over here, save to library. So let's call this Mac new. Speak one more time. Right, Mac new post template. Okay, I'm gonna set it to post, save the library. Now we don't need this page. So let's go now to our dashboard. Add a new post and I'll show you how to add this post onto your design. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be a general post. Okay, so I'm gonna go right away here and set my featured image. So this is now gonna be my image. I'm gonna select it. And then over here, you can see there's no, um, there isn't that full width option, that's fine. Uh, post title, we're gonna hide that. So that always needs to be done. Okay, so we're gonna publish this. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here and click on use Divi Builder. Right, so over here now, this is where you want to come and choose your pre-made layout. Your saved layouts. And I think it's this one here, Mac new Pulse template. Okay, let's go with that. And again, this keeps spinning for some reason, and that will show once I refresh the page. Not sure if that's to do with my internet speed, but as you can see, 
this doesn't look right. So this is where now you want to go back into edit post. And then choose full width. Click on update, preview, and there we go. So I agree <laughs> with everyone uh, that's saying these stages are very long just to achieve a basic post. But this is what we have for now, and this is the best way we can achieve this. But the most important thing is this does not look like our basic post that we, um, that we have uh, out of the box when we install Divi. So at least here we are able to just have things dynamically pulled in and we can also, you know, have our images here, especially here on this overlay image is dynamically pulled in and this top image here as well uh, from your featured image. And over here, we can also add other elements that are also dynamically pulled in. So this is just a basic template, but you can, you know, come up with even more exciting uh, designs. You can even add um, section dividers here if you wanted to. But like I said, we wanted to keep this you know, very, very basic. But I'm sure you can agree with me that this layout is much better than what you get out of the box with Divi. So this is how you create this um, um, post template. So we have a question here from Ron. Ron says, why, does, uh, why doesn't the full width option come up initially? So to be honest, I don't know. I don't know if this is a bug. I will need to definitely uh, tell the DV team uh, that this is the issue. It doesn't show up uh, initially. It, I mean, it's very confusing as a design workflow to first save the page, uh, publish it, and then come back to just get that option of, I mean, for full width. It's very confusing, especially for beginners. So I'm going to raise this uh, as an issue. And in our next episode, I will also bring it up and give you an update on what happens there. Because, I mean, as a workflow, this doesn't work, to be honest. It's it's just too all over the place. Um, Donal says, could it be uh, because WordPress doesn't have a full width um, by default? So when you change it to DV, it's then inserted to full width choice. I'm not 100% sure about that. So um, this is what I need to find out from the developers and uh, see what uh, feedback they give us. Uh, Dave says, is there a way to dynamically pull a different video thumbnail? No. Uh, the video thumbnail that is dynamically pulled is set to pull from our featured image. So you can't pull the image from somewhere else because remember, dynamic content is pulling stuff from the database, okay? So it won't just pull unless, I mean, you have to specify where you want that uh, to be pulled from. And there's no option to pull the dynamic image from any other place other than the um, featured image. Uh, as per Bre um, as per Bre oh, Brenda must have mentioned something here. Let's see. Right, I'm not sure where that post is, but uh, Ron here says, uh, she used the full width with WordPress before the latest DV update. Yeah, I mean, I use it as well. I mean, I've actually done a tutorial where I do the full width <laughs> design uh, before. But in this update, I don't know if it's because it's WordPress 5 or it's the latest DV update. I'm not sure. But I've done a tutorial before uh, showing how to do the um, post template. It worked fine with the full width, but for some reason, when I was playing around with this this time, it wasn't working as, as it did before. So I'm not sure if it's a Divi update that's caused that or it's a WordPress update uh, that caused that. Right, so let's have a look here. Right, um, 
Could you please, uh, this is from Ratapula, could you please teach how to make a personalized product page that contains a button to add to the WooCommerce cart? Okay, um, I guess that we can do in the next, uh, the next episode, uh, because uh, in this episode here, I just wanted to quickly uh, put together a post layout for this particular website so that the future posts that we add here will have a, a standard you know, way of showing these templates. So what I may want to do here is, is well is to go to the main page and also show or add a call to action button, which goes to, uh, to our shopping page uh, before we finalize today's tutorial. But I will make a note of that because we really wanna make this template look really nice before we give it out to the world, okay? Um, Right, okay. E.D. Uh, e. Kennedy says, that, uh, I never get credit. <laughs> I don't know why that is, let me see. Right, okay. Let's take a look here at the homepage. Because remember, when we created the home page, uh, we just created so uh, basically like this. And then we mentioned that we, we were going to add a call to action button here. So what we need to do is to add a button that takes people to our shop. So over here on the top right, I'm gonna click here on start shopping. So this is the page we need to link to, okay? So this is our shopping page. So we want people to be able to go to the shopping page and take a look at our merch, okay? And this is the page. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here and then let's enable the visual builder. All right, so let's add our button. So here we can either add two buttons. We can either say, um, take a look at our shop or um, view the, uh, the blog post or visit the blog. So we can have two buttons or one, but in this case, I'm just gonna have one uh, where I'm gonna say, visit the shop. Okay, so this is our button text. We're gonna come over here to the link and then we're gonna add the button URL. And that is to the shopping page. Right, so now that we have this, let's design the button itself. So we're gonna come over here to design and first of all, we're gonna center it. And then we are going to go into button and then click on use custom styles for button. All right, so here I wanna go straight away and add our background color like that. And then we're gonna add our text color. But before we do that, let's add our border color here so that our button is just one color. And then visit the shop. This is where we want to change the, um, the text, the text color. So I think any of these dark colors work really well. So I'm gonna go with this one. And then we're also gonna play with uh, the font weight. So here we have regular, let's go with semi-bold. Okay, it's all caps, that's fine. Now here, if you want to show an icon, um, we can show it by default or a mouse over. So in our case here, uh, where is that option? There's an option to show icon on hover. So let's, let's keep it on there, okay? Now, what we're gonna do next is, um, I think the button looks okay as it is. So let's save this. So as you can see now, our main header area now has a call to action. So let me save this page and exit the visual builder. Right, so when people come to our website, you know, they can read our title here, what the website is about. Um, it's a bit of a description text. There's a call to action. So when they click here, it takes them to start shopping. And these are the products so far. Now, as I mentioned before, if this 
page had uh, quite a few products in there. We can actually go in and add some product categories. So we can actually show this as categories. And then, you know, they can choose which category they want to go into. And then that category will have even more products. So we just want to keep this simple by just showing, you know, the latest merch on the shop. And if we have more, we can just, you know, continue adding more here just to balance the design. But this is what we have so far. And uh, the other thing is, all our images here work fine. Now, as I mentioned here on the Stay In Touch, this is uh, the option where you can get to get people to sign up for the mailing list if they want to be um, updated when, let's say, the uh, content creator releases new content. So this is where they can add that information here, okay? So I will add that, um, and I use ConvertKit for this. So that will be sort of like the last stage in the design process. Okay, so now that we have this, let's just go through some of the other pages. So we have the adventures page. So I think all we have to do now is to work on the about page and the blog page, okay? So over here on the blog page, as you can see, it's uh, pretty basic. So this is the page we want to go in and customize and make it look way much better. Okay, so uh, let's have a look here. All right, so let's go back and uh, just work on our blog page for now quickly. So we're going to come here on, dis on dashboard, settings. Uh, next, we're going to come over here to reading. So as we can see here, our post page is not set to, uh, to anything, which is good. So we're going to go back to our blog page. So let's go back to pages, all pages. And let's find our blog page. And here it is. I'm going to click on edit. OK, so we're going to come over here, edit with the uh, DV Builder. Build from scratch. Single column. And this is where we're going to add the blog. Right. So here there's a bit of work to do because you have to decide how you want this page to look. So this page is going to pull all the blog posts from our posts uh, and display them on this page. So what we're going to do here is uh, by default, it has everything all in one line. And that's not what we want. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is to display the amount of uh, posts that we need to have. So I'm going to go with six. And then all categories, that's fine. We want to pull all the categories. OK. Next, we're going to come over here to Elements. And this is where we get to show the featured image if we need to show the author, the date, uh, and so on. So this is quite a lot of information here that we can play around with. We also have an option here to add our background. But uh, the way this is displayed, I'm not really happy with that. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on layout. So at the moment, it's set to full width. So ideally, I want this to be a grid. OK, so now we can see that this looks way much better. Now I can go in and um, work on how to make this look much better. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is to click here on this brush tool and work on this description text. So the text size. Okay, let's go back in here. Let's choose our option. So first of all, I'm not sure if I'm going to have this description text here. It's a bit too much. So, and this is also an option that I would have loved to have where you can go in and specify how much of this text you wanna show. So on the content here, all we have is show except and show content. And that's all we have. OK, so we're going to come over here to Elements. OK, let's add our Read More button. So and we're going to go in and customize that as well. Right, so, so Show Date. I don't think we need to show the date here. Categories, I'm going to disable the category and also the author. OK, Show Pagination, that is fine.
Okay, so I've reduced this and that looks um, a bit much better. Now let's go to the design. So here on the text, we're going to start with, so this is the title text. So let's make this bold. Okay, so that looks much better. I won't increase the size because that size looks okay. Right, so moving on. The title text size, yes, we're going to leave that as it is. Now let's go to the body text. So this is the read more button. So I'm just looking for the font, uh, for the color here that I can use. And I think this is fine. We can go with that. Let's reduce the size here a little bit. Okay. Now there's something that's happening here, which I don't understand. So if I click here on this little button here, and I try to reduce the size, you can see it's working on the read more button. But the text that I'm supposed to be working on is this particular text here, this uh, description text. So I don't know if that's a bug as well. So as you can see, if I select it, now if I, if I choose general post, you'll notice that this will work fine. You can see it here. I can make it big and customize the size. But if I come in here and try to fix my body text, it's only working for the read more button, okay? So I'm not sure what that is. So I'm gonna come back over here and disable the read more. Okay, so now let's go back in here and let's see if that works. Okay, that's not working either. And that is very frustrating. Very frustrating indeed. Okay, I'm gonna save this page. Definitely, I will report this to, uh, to ET, uh, Ron, definitely, because I think that's a bug as well. So let's try it one more time. Yeah, definitely, that's not working. So let's see if we can fix the line height. Yeah, the line height is working, you can see. The line height is working fine. It's just the body text size that's not working. I guess that's something that we may need to go in and do via CSS. Okay, so now that we have all our posts here, that's looking great. It may be a good idea here to have uh, an area here where we have the hero area. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna click this plus button here. Okay, so I might need to go into my wireframe mode. Click on regular and drag this to the top. Okay, so that, I guess this is the only way we can do this. Now, I wanna also show you something that we can also do here. So you can actually add a full width title here if you want to do that. So I'm gonna choose full width post title. In fact, let's work with that so you can see how much variety uh, options that we have here to design our page. So I'm gonna go back to the front uh, uh, to the front page here. Now let's go in and add our background image. So let's say, or in fact, we can add a background color if you want to, as you can see here, that's the color. So we can actually add a background image here. So let's say our image is, not sure which one to go with. Okay, let's go with, uh, let's go with this one here. Okay, upload an image. Okay, so now we have our image there. So let's go to overlay. Right, so the overlay here allows us to see the color that we've just added here in the, uh, on the background. So we can change this color, make it dark as well, just like what we did before. Now, the most important thing here is just to make sure that everything uh, the sizing is okay. So we just come over here to design because as you can see here, you know, this area here is a bit too small. So if we come to spacing, we can add some padding. So I've activated the chain now. By activating the chain, we're going to be able to add our padding both to the top and the bottom. As I drag, as you can see here, it's now being added to the top and the bottom, which I think is really cool. Okay. 
So now this becomes our blog page. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so now what we can do is to go in and make some adjustments to this text. So let's go into the settings, design. So right now it's set to dark, we can set it to light. So now we can read it all. And if you want to further adjust this, you can center this if you want to. And then this just shows, but again, you don't want to have this uh, by Mac admin and so on, because this is just going to be the title of this page. So we're going to remove the author, remove the date, and no comments. Okay, so all we have now is just the blog, the blog title. Okay, so let's make it all caps, change the color, nice and big. And we may want to add some letter spacing here, like that. So I think that looks nice. And then we can save. So now that is our blog page. So as you can see, we've quickly created a blog page. Now I would say don't go with the default blog page out of the box from uh, Elegant Themes. Make sure you design your own and make it look the way you want it to look. As you can see here, our page looks much, much different. Okay, so I'm gonna save the page and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, great. So this is the hero area of our page. And if we scroll down here, this is where we see our posts. And when we click on the post, this is what the post looks like. So I'm sure you can appreciate that um, by designing this website from scratch and creating your own templates and your own designs, it gives your page a unique design, a unique view. So this is the best way that I recommend that you take a look, I mean, that you design your pages. Okay, so then again, if I come back here to blog, this is our blog page. And this looks really custom. And that looks way much better. All right, so I know we had some hiccups in the beginning. Um, we have a comment here from Ron and Ron says, Yes, you can also drag, but what I'm trying to do here is as I'm designing, I'm just trying to make it easier for, you know, because sometimes on the screen, I'm, I'm not sure how you're seeing it on your end. So sometimes I, I pretty much go into the, uh, the old way of doing things. So I would go into the settings, uh, sizing, and just show you how to add uh, the uh, padding rather than try to go and do it manually with the latest uh, update, just so that everyone sees what I'm doing on the screen. Um, the grid still looks very basic, in my opinion. Divi needs more blog post layouts. Absolutely agree. Uh, this, again, is something that I'm uh, looking forward to because they're going to be updating the, uh, the, the blogs and also the WooCommerce stuff. So I'm really looking forward to that because right now we are restricted to just one type of design, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Uh, Ratipula says, uh, Mac, you lost video. Oh, it could be. Thank you for letting me know. It could be that my, um, my camera, my camera's battery is gone. Let me check. Right, it looks like my battery died, so sorry about that. So <laughs> you won't be seeing my face now because the battery has just died. Anyway, um, I'm still open to some questions. If you have any questions, please uh, post your questions in the comments box. <laughs> Ron says, better we see the presentation. <laughs> 
Right. Agunta here says, I would like to give my blog archive page also categories navigation bar with pictures describing the different categories. Um, there's a WP plugin, category images. Um, to be honest, I don't know uh, any plugin that does that. Um, and I'm responding here to Agunta's question. Uh, I don't know of any uh, plugin that does that. Um, Peter here says, did you do a video on how to earn a living with Divi? No, I haven't done a video, um, but what exactly, which way do you exactly mean? Because there's two ways you can do this. You can either do this uh, freelancing, uh, creating websites for small businesses or individuals, or promoting Divi itself as an affiliate. So which, uh, what would you like to know? Promoting Divi as an affiliate or um, freelancing? Okay. Yes, I could do a series. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, if uh, quite a lot of you are interested in that, I have quite a lot of uh, experience in that because that's what I did when I was running my design agency before. And before I did that, I was also doing uh, freelancing. So if you'd like to know that, I mean, this is a series that we can uh, uh, we can add after this, uh, after we've completed with this, um, working on this website. So if you guys are happy with that, uh, please let me know in the comments box. Do you want to know how to earn a living freelancing using Divi? So that could be our topic. So if a lot of you are interested in that, please say yes. If not, just say no in the comments box so I can have an idea of, um, you know, how many people are interested? Uh, okay, I can see. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, so would you like a series on freelancing where with Divi? Freelancing with Divi? Please say yes in the comments box. I can see there's quite a lot of you that are on the uh, on the stream. Uh, there's over sixty. So I've only had a few uh, responses. Agante says, yes, freelancing. I can see some thumbs up from Danelle. Okay. Uh, so I haven't seen a no so far. Okay, Ratanpula says no to freelancing. Uh, Ed says, yes, please. Okay. Uh, does anyone say no to freelancing in our next uh, next series? Ron says uh, more interested in how to create sales, marketing, and landing and review sites. Okay, uh, that's something that we can also uh, introduce. Uh, landing pages. This is something that I'm really going into. In fact, this is a, a bit of a sidetrack. Yesterday, I posted a video on my YouTube channel talking about my failure with um, free I mean with um, affiliate marketing okay it's about an eight minute video uh, you may be interested to watch that uh, because in that video I talk about how I tried to do affiliate marketing for about a year and uh, pretty much I failed to be honest now the main reason because I've been taking some notes as uh, as I was doing, uh, going through the whole process of trying to do affiliate marketing. And um, I'm not saying I didn't make any money from it, but from what I see online, a lot of people say you can make um, $200 a day, $300 a day, you know, in a month you can make six figures, you know, stuff like that. So I've been trying to follow that. And to be honest, uh, I wasn't able to reach that. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing a separate series of, um, of videos where I'm giving it a go see how I can um, uh, promote products, you know, affiliate marketing. And I've given myself a target of six figures in 12 months. So I know it's a, it's a massive target <laughs> uh, and I'm far from it right now. So I'm going to be documenting the whole process. And that process is all definitely going to involve some landing pages, how to write copy. It's going to involve um, 
marketing, how to use Divi itself to do the marketing, what's working, what's not working, uh, what headlines work, what headlines don't work. So I'll be testing quite a lot of things. And um, that series, I've just created a, um, a page for it where I'll just be giving my feedback. So let's say, for example, um, I try different headlines to promote an affiliate product and it works. I'll then be coming back, doing a quick, vi quick video saying, guys, look, I tried this. It definitely works. This is how I did it. Look at the results here. If it fails, I'll be saying, guys, I tried this last week. It didn't work. Here's the results. But all in all, I will be using Divi as my base. Um, I'm also um, reading quite a few information out there from uh, Russell Brunson, uh, who is the owner of ClickFunnels. But... Uh, having played around with ClickFunnels, I also noticed that majority of what you can do with Click, ClickFunnels, you can do in WordPress. So it's not really the tool, but it's how to structure these messages. So I will be working on that as well, because for all you freelancers out there and anyone who's trying to sell anything online, there is definitely a way to do it. It's not very, it's not very straightforward. You know, you have to be very good at your messaging. You also have to be very good at marketing, creating promotional videos. Uh, and putting together a message, an offer that people will not say no to. And that's what I'm learning right now. So I'm going to incorporate that knowledge with DV and see how much how much um, I can get out of it in terms of landing pages, uh, promotional videos, what works, what doesn't work. So keep an eye on my YouTube channel. If you haven't watched that video, if you go to Mac TV, basically on my YouTube channel, you will see that video. And uh, I've also included a link where if you want to follow me specifically for that, uh, there's also an opt-in where I'll be discussing all that information. Right. Um, Ellie says, uh, uh, sounds great. Can't wait. Yep. <laughs> uh, Donnell says six figures, 100,000. Okay. That's 100,000, 12 months. So that's my target. Uh, I know it may seem like a lot, but um, of course, you have to have a target. If I hit it, I hit it. If I don't, I'll also discuss how I didn't um, <laughs> reach that target. And that'll give you an idea of what to expect if you want to go into affiliate marketing. Right. Uh, could you also do a video on essentials and exceptional plugins for Divi? Yes, I will also do that as well. Definitely. Um, Rito says, uh, this is the third time I've asked, can I watch these videos part one to part three later in? Uh, yes, in the moment, at the moment, I can link to Crowdcast, but like I said, you know, I've been trying to uh, update uh, Mac University. There's a lot of bugs uh, that was in there. So that's why on the Easter holiday, I couldn't really uh, add all these videos because it wasn't working. So I will add them and I can, you know, send an email out if you want me to remind you, Rito. So um, I'm going to try and do this today and tomorrow because all the bugs that I was working on are now working. I mean, every, everything is now working. So it's a matter of just adding these videos onto Mac University. Um, Donnell says, I wrote uh, 1,002 zeros. <laughs> Okay, um, any more questions? Any more questions? Right, uh, just a quick note. The reason why I'm really interested in um, landing pages and marketing and all of that is if you want to sell anything online, your messaging has to be on point. Your messaging has to be co convincing. Your message has to be you know, like really, really good. So marketing is also very important. Even as a freelance designer, you have to be able to convince um convince your prospects that you can deliver and what they, uh, what they will be getting out of whatever whatever product that you I mean whatever service that you're trying to uh, tell people. So marketing is definitely definitely a must to learn. Um, this is something that I mean I've been dabbling into. It's quite difficult because you do need to uh, learn just like any other subject, but once you get it, Definitely, definitely is very good. One thing that I found quite interesting is when I was uh, doing my freelance designing is uh, here in Birmingham, where I am, I'm at a, uh, I'm in a, um, 
like similar to a business park sort of place where we have offices and there's also other companies that are within uh, this building. So a lot of these companies are also um, in the creative industries, they're filmmakers, um, the design agencies, uh, branding companies, and so on and so forth. So one day I was speaking to um, one guy who saw my YouTube channel and we started talking. So, so he said, look, I'm also into web design. I design websites for companies. I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting because I do something similar. So uh, he showed me his websites. And to be honest, when I looked at the websites, they were not great, but he charged about 50,000 pounds per website. And I said, how? How is it possible that you charge minimum 50,000 pounds for a website? I mean, what's, what's the technique? What, what's, you know, what, what are you doing that's so different? Because my, my websites were around the 2,000 to 3,000 pound mark. And he was around the 50,000 mark. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. But what I realized is, his marketing was on point and his target audience uh, was definitely on point. He wasn't targeting anyone. He targeted a specific industry which had the, uh, the money to, to spend on a website. So it wasn't a matter of the websites being spectacularly designed. It was more the marketing. So that's where I learned that marketing is also very, very important. And this is why uh, I've uh, put myself in the deep end. I'm learning this so I can teach it to... Uh, to all you guys out there. But I have to master it first and make sure that it works before I teach it. <laughs> okay, I uh, hope that makes sense. All right, guys, any more, uh, any more questions? Any more questions? Uh, Ed, uh, Ed Kennedy says, really looking forward to your affiliate marketing series, Mag. Thank you very much. I'm definitely um, working on that. I really want to... Uh, see how that uh, comes along and it's going to be very very exciting uh ratapula good to see you thank you very much for tuning in uh see you again next saturday right so uh monique says niche marketing is crucial yes absolutely i mean that's what i i learned that the hard way because that's why i went into uh, Groupon, you know, because I thought, you know, trying to get as many customers in Groupon as possible was the way forward, but that was the wrong move. In fact, I'll be discussing this uh, on my tips on the series on how to become a freelance designer. Uh, Russell says, uh, ever thought of hosting a DV user group in Birmingham? Um, I'm not sure because I don't know how many, if we have quite a lot of people here in Birmingham that use uh, DV, but if they do, I don't mind hosting one because there's a lot of uh, uh, restaurants, cafes where we can meet up, you know, we can, you know, we can choose to meet one, once every month, discuss DV stuff, you know, I don't mind doing that because I'm mostly in Birmingham anyways, but if there's a, um, you know, uh, quite a lot of people that are, that use DV, I'm very, very happy to do that. So I'll try and promote it and see how far we go with that. It would be nice to, uh, to, uh, to speak to uh, people that use Divi as well. <laughs> Ron says, I would have to fly 16,000 kilometers. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Really appreciate your time. Uh, next next uh, Saturday, we're going to finalize this design. In fact, that will be our last session where we make this website mobile friendly. We're going to do the finishing touches and then package the whole website. In fact, I'll show you how to package it so that in the future, you can also package your own websites and you know share it with your customers, sell it or whatever it is. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you again on Saturday. Have a great weekend and take care.